Um, first of all, if you are a member of the Central Committee, uh, and if you are a primary, make sure you have your voting card. If you are an alternate, and your primary is not here, make sure you get your voting card. When we get to the point where we're voting, obviously only one person can vote, not both the primary and the alternate. But um, Joe back there is the one who's handing out the voting cards. Okay? Um, you'll be doing public comments um, at this time. And we do have a special guest, a candidate for insurance commissioner, Asif Mahmoud, um, a Democratic candidate for insurance commissioner. Um, I've allowed him five minutes, so please give your attention to Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Really, it's an honor and privilege and an opportunity to be connected with the people who are connected to the rest of the community and rest of the population in this area. My name is Dr. Asif Mahmood, and I'm a candidate for insurance commissioner. I am in active medical practice. I have been practicing medicine in the state of California for almost two decades. And I'm proud to say that in my two decades of practice, I have never charged one patient who did not have an insurance because I believe healthcare is a right, not a privilege. My vision, my vision for healthcare is universal health, single payer, but more importantly, Medicare for all. I would again say Medicare for all because I believe in affordable, accessible, and top quality health care, not just a health card, but health care. Yes. I want to also expand the definition of basic medical health care. I want to make sure there is affordable mental health care, which is not even existing today. I want to make sure our school going students, I want to make sure our law enforcement agencies, I want to make sure our first responders who are treating with, who are dealing with trauma every day, they have affordable mental health care available whenever they need it. I want to also make sure that we concentrate on women's health and reproductive care, which is in a great danger right now. I want to make sure women's health care is not only pregnancy, but pregnancy-related conditions like postpartum depression, which is not even a one questionnaire after a woman gives a birth, somebody asks her, is she feeling any different symptoms? I want to make sure conditions like that, and eclampsia, and preeclampsia, and other conditions like pregnancy, Pregnancy related are covered and covered 100 percent. Thank you. I want, I, want, I, want, I want to make sure there is a mandatory child health care because I don't want anybody to be bargaining the health care of our children. And I want to make sure every school going child has a health care where he is being mandated to see a doctor at certain gaps so that his growth, mental and physical and health is monitored, not just get to the medical doctor because they're getting vaccination. I want to also include preventive dental health care in this thing, especially for our children because that is a huge issue. I also want to, I also want to stop the predatory actions of insurance companies, especially in the situations of fire and earthquake and mudslides and floods when they are supposed to serve over people but they nickel and dime them. I promise you I will always stand for you and I will fight with them. That is why I pledged from very first day that I will not take a penny from insurance companies or pharmaceutical industry and I have not and I will not yeah. because I believe they are the obstruction between a common man and their health care and their rights and I will fight for you. <laughs> I'm an immigrant myself. I understand the challenges of an immigrant, and I am an immigrant and also Muslim and also Democrat, and I understand the challenges. I want to pass a message to Donald Trump to you people that I am a Muslim immigrant from this great blue state of California. I do not believe 
Donald Trump's divided states of America. I believe in the United States of America, where all colors and all races and all ethnicities and all religious groups and everybody with all ethnicities can live together. They can look different, but they will be fighting for the common cause. They can be eating different food, but they will be fighting for the same passion. Their passion is diversity. Diversity, which is the strength of this country. You must have heard last week, his, one of his secretaries said he doesn't care about diversity. But I have a message for him too. We fight, we live for diversity, and we will do everything for diversity. And inclusiveness, where we bring everybody, all ethnicities and colors together for the progress of this country, for the strengthening of this society, and for the future of our children, because they are the future of this country, they are the future of this world. So we want to work together. I I want to leave a minute for any questions, but I am here just for this meeting to pass my message. If there is any advice, any guidance, any uh, suggestion you have, please get on our website. It is asif, A-S-I-F, 2018.com, asif2018.com. I am really thankful to you. Let's work together. Let's make this society better. Let's stop those people who say the healthcare cannot be for everybody. We can do it. As a physician, I tell you that if we get the money from insurance companies, the pharmaceutical industry, and our medical contribution and medical advance together, Medicare for all can be a reality. I will fight for this. I will do this. I need your support, and I'm looking forward for your guidance. Thank you so very much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. and thank you for staying in your time limit as well. Really appreciate that. If anyone would like to get a hold of him, I'm sure that um, he'd be happy to hear from you through his website, or I'm not sure if his um, assistant has materials to hand out. But okay, we need to uh, we need to go on to um, public comment now on non-agenda items. So if you're wanting to talk about something on the agenda. Or if you're a club rep, a member of club rep, you'll have an opportunity to speak later. Um, so this is something not on the agenda, not club related. Please raise your hand. You have one minute if you want to speak. Adam and then Ron. Hi, uh, Adam Martinez, uh, primary from District 4. Just want to give an update at our last meeting. Our request is to enforce it with two tax measures in Maria. One is a half cent increase to our sales tax. The other is a two percent increase to our hotel tax. So we're raising two million dollars for our struggling city. I want to let folks know that uh, we have uh, qualified to go out and collect petition signatures, and we've been out collecting signatures in Marina. And uh, we're doing okay, but given the tight timeline, we're likely to need to go to pay signature gatherings. And so if anybody lives in Marina, I have a petition signature here you can sign. Um, if anybody wants to support this grassroots effort to fix the city's budget, um, I would certainly take money. And you can make checks out to uh, the committee for a safer, better marina. Okay, so check with Adam if you are interested in supporting ballot measure there. Lavon, and then recruit. Okay. I have been a member of this committee for years. And, you know, what I'm asking for, and we talk about it all the time, is the same amount of respect for the people on the ground especially the African-American community that is being pushed out. We don't have as many numbers as everybody else, but we are still important. Uh, all of the, the stuff that's going on with the disrespect and not wanting to hear from certain people is not going to bring about the changes that we call the center, the center for change. The changes are going to have to happen now. It's been too long, and they're going to be, people are going to have to get over themselves and look at the other people on the ground that need to help the district. most. We're talking about the taxes for the city. What are the, the taxes for the people so that they can live their lives and take care of their families and not have to uh, walk around and beg people for help? When are we going to get there? <clears throat> Thank you, Lauren. Uh, anyone? In um, my name is Gertrude Smith. Um, my name is Gertrude Smith. I'm a resident of Seaside. 
and um, I I just want to let everyone know that various people who are running for office and campaigning, especially specifically if you're in CSA, um, I'm offering my time and my uh, alliance to members with like their campaign and we them. Um, so specifically, if you live in Seaside, and it's not, I'm, I'm not just for doing this person, we have to actually like that stuff. So, but I will help you. All right, thank you, Gertrude. That's very kind. Okay, two announcements. One, the movie about the Lord's work is on tonight at 9 o'clock. That's when we're going to get out of here by now. We will have to. Someone uh, to loan me a car. I hope that works. There you go. Thank you. Hey, anybody else? Tyler. So, just a real quick piece of uh, rare good news out of Washington, D.C. Uh, from the good Congressman Jimmy Panetta. My name's Tyler. I work in Salinas and his district office. Uh, we were excited to announce today. Uh, $500,000 coming to the district um, for programs combating homelessness and hunger. <laughs> including $292,000 right here in Monterey County. So we know that our local organizations will be spending that well. Um, and the funds come through FEMA from the Emergency Shelter Safe and Protection Funds, or we supplement food, shelter, rent, mortgage, utility assistance programs for people who have uh, emergency situations or in dire need, uh, such as in their house and like that. So we're excited to announce uh, that today. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. And Adam. Hi, everybody. My name's Adam. Um, I'm the uh, treasurer for both the Monterey County Young Democrats and for the Women's March uh, for 2019. Um, but I'm here tonight, oh, and I'm also a uh, campaign manager for the Union Gus, who I believe is on your agenda tonight as well. But uh, I'm here tonight specifically to speak to all of you as a volunteer. Um, I've been helping Darren Huber, who is running for Monterey County Auditor Controller. And uh, I want to first thank Karen for, and, the, and the entire endorsement subcommittee for all of their diligence. Uh, it's been a very um, thorough process. Unfortunately, due to unavoidable circumstances, Darren has not been able to participate um, through no fault of anyone, here, but uh, that's just the circumstance that he's in. And so I just want to uh, advocate that I know this is a often not well understood position in our county government. Uh, if it's helpful for anyone who hasn't been reading the weekly about our county auditor's office, I brought copies of their most recent articles. They're up front if you'd like a copy. And I would just urge that in my personal opinion, uh, the best course of action in this race is no endorsement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else, not agenda item comments? <laughs> Seeing none, going once, going twice, okay, thank you. Um, we're going to move on then to swearing in of new members. So if you could uh, work your way up here, it's um, Joe Lutz, Open it for Anthony Wilson, Juan Orenga, Open it for Anthony Caballero, Joe Espinosa, Open it for Ryan Munavar, and it's not on here, but she did, Elena contacted us, and uh, Donna Hepburn for Elena. So if you could all come up here. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to those constitutions. 
that I will honor and uphold the bylaws of the Monterey County Democratic Central Committee. That I will honor and uphold the bylaws of the Monterey Central Committee. That's good. That I keep this obligation freely. That I keep this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. About which I'm about to enter. About which I'm about to enter. Thank you and congratulations. I'm Holly. back here. She's so supposed to be. Holly, she will um, be here tonight. It's, fi it's fifteen dollars for uh, the alternates. Okay. Um, I would also like to make an announcement that uh, Adam Pinterest and Natara Deva will be the representatives for Young Democrats, our newest club. So they'll be sworn next month. As club reps, they don't get sworn in at this immediate meeting. Their name is announced. They will be sworn in at the next meeting. Uh, okay. Alan? Yes. Linda Boyce is, Linda, I think that's her last name, is taking over for Scott Dick as the um, yeah. rep. And, so and if, 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 if been in email touch with us, but we haven't received Well, then I would like to announce it so it, she can be voted in next yeah, week, or next month. Yeah. Linda Bino for uh, DCFP. Democratic Club of Monterey Peninsula. Yes. Right. Okay, anything else on swearing in? Okay. The treasurer is here now. Okay, all right. So those of you who got sworn in, please see the treasurer in the back. Um, agenda review and approval. Is there any uh, comments on the agenda? Okay, no. A motion by Bill to approve it. Is there a second? A second by Tyler. Any other comments on the agenda? Yes. Um, At the last meeting, the table is the gentleman in the door stands up to two marine uh, vendors. Yes. Um, I guess we table that to not a date specific, but correct. Correct. the assumption of the table that comes up the next meeting, we're probably going to have to do so um, we can ask the issues committee to, to look into that. Um, again, I think speaking strictly as the chair, I would I would prefer that the Marina Club, you know, come forward with sort of a, a position on this one way or another. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. That's how I feel. But we talked about the yeah. we did talk about it in the Okay. Um, minutes. Oh, we should vote on that. All in favor of the approval of the agenda, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Minutes from February were in your packet. They were also mailed out to you. Um, I, would a, a, I would receive a motion to approve. Okay, Natalie, is there a second? Okay, Bill, is there any request to modify the minutes? Uh, yeah, Tyler. There's two bills in my hand. Okay. <laughs> Please make note of that. I don't see our secretary here. I'm right here. You're back. Here? Okay. So do you make note of that, please. <laughs> uh, anything else on the minutes? All right. So we have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. Uh, the financial report, which is on page three and four. Thank you to our treasurer. Do um, you have any comments or questions on the financial report? All right, seeing none, um, I'm going to accept that report and we'll move on. Okay, as far as speakers go, as you know, we've invited and offered the clubs the opportunity to have a um, 
featured speaker. That's 30 minutes, including question and answer. Any press, the whole thing, not more than 30 minutes because our time is limited here. Um, next month, the Progressive Club has um, volunteered to do that, but we have beyond that, I think all months are pretty much open. So um, let the board know if your club is interested in that and who you would like to have speak. Okay, going on to information. Information item 8A. Uh, the committee, the central committee, is hosting a voter registration training on Saturday the 31st right here. So please share that with your networks. Um, item B, Bill Monning's birthday bash with California Senate Pro Temp Tony Atkins is coming up April 6th. If you are interested in attending, you should contact um, Gary. Thank you. Contact Gary. Please do. Um, so, what we, uh, that's uh, April 6th at the Hyatt, and tickets are $50. And what I'm, we have some free seats for people who buy a ticket. We have a second ticket for free. So, I'm going to pass this around. Uh, with the information, and if you think you you can write your name here, and then your guest if you know who it is at this time. So it's basically two for one. So I'm going to pass this around, and also I'm going to pass out some pictures of Bill. Uh, so uh, don't worry, he's not, he, he knows about this, so he won't be upset. So it's very fun. They'll be at the event. So pass these around and make sure I get them back. Okay, thank you. And then item C, uh, the Central Committee is hosting a volunteer fair. That's also here April 14th. So endorsed candidates um, are allowed to set, and, and clubs are allowed to have booths here with your information to try to recruit volunteers. If you are running for office in the fall, so you would not obviously have been endorsed by us yet, because we won't do those endorsements until probably August, you of course can still come here and network, talk to volunteers, seek volunteers. Uh, yeah? Is that a firm date? That's the same date that we have um, progressive Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Are we only doing this in Salinas and not at the fair in Seaside and not in Seaside and not At this time, yeah. Okay, item D, uh, the Progressive Democratic Club is hosting an event with Sam Farr, A Life of Public Service. That's uh, the end of April, April 27th at the Unitarian Universalist Church. Of course, everybody is welcome and encouraged to attend. Um, all right, going on to club reports. And again, a just a reminder to clubs, if you want something in here, if you know there's an event coming up, if you get it to us, you know, before we put this together, before this, the weekend before our meeting, we will include it in the agenda, we will include it in the packet. Um, so please make note of that for the future. All right, we're going to go to the Democratic Women. Okay, uh, the we just held uh, our luncheon uh, in uh, March and uh, <laughs> uh, Jane and uh, Tony Thurman uh, running for uh, State Superintendent of Public Schools and uh, Deneen for Monterey County. Uh, our next uh, luncheon will be on uh, April 20th. Uh, Betty Lee will be coming uh, to speak and uh, there are Next day, from 11 to 1, uh, there is a brunch uh, fundraiser for her at Connie Murray's house, to which we'll all be invited. We are sending uh, the Thank you. So April 20th, we read April 21st, a fundraising brunch. Uh, Monterey Peninsula Democrats, do you have a report? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, we're going to be having a um, film festival movie night on April the 25th, and the movie is Freedom for the Wolf, and it's a pretty interesting movie. It's a new generation of elected leaders are dismantling freedom and democracy as we know it. So it's a film about, it's an international film about the uh, 
disruption of democracy. And is that going to be here, or where is it going to be? It's actually going to be at the MCAR building, the uh, Monterey County Association of Realtors. And the reason why we selected that venue is because it holds more people, and it has really good... Okay, so April 25th, at the Monterey County uh, Realtors Association building, uh, there will be a film "Freedom for Freedom for the Wolf." Thank you. And I have some. You have some flyers. Or, okay. Thank you. And if you send again, if you send a flyer to me or to our communication chair Ryan too, we can also include it in our email forms. Okay. Is there, is there an email address? Uh, yeah. Let's talk afterwards. Okay, Salinas Valley Dems, any report? We have no reports. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marina Dems, any report? Uh, no report at this time. Okay. If you've just arrived, please make sure to get your voting card and sign in. Yes, sign in too, please. Okay, and uh, Progressive Dems, Natalie, do you have um, Just that we're going to have uh, good old days. We have a booth at good old days at 14th and 15th, and, um, and it's looking people will sign up for them. And, Which 14th uh, of April? Right, yeah, the same day that you're having volunteer with them. Um, and but we'll also be doing volunteer with okay. them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if you would like to help out with a booth at Good Old Days, April 14th, April 15th, uh, check with Natalie and Gary. I have no idea. I did decide to stand far again. April 27th. The regular meeting of the Progressive Dinner is on April 12th. And we have a, um, we purchased a booth uh, or plan of donation. We're going to set up a booth at United Farm Workers March at Sister Chavez Park. On, uh, uh, on April 8th, and uh, March passed our new headquarters, and uh, you know, raise hell and have fun. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have anyone from the Canada Wait for four. All right, I'm not seeing anybody to speak up. Okay. No report from the Canada Um No report from the Young Downs, I assume. Not in here. This time. Um, no report at this time. We're working on recruitment and a voter registration drive at college campuses. Okay. Um, so, moving on, request for action. So, um, these are not things we have to vote on, but these are things that the e board is bringing your, to your attention. We're asking again for your help. Uh, the United Farm Workers Annual Cesar Chavez March, which is April 8th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Salinas. Uh, we would really appreciate that a big turnout for Monterey County Democrats. Uh, we want to support labor, and of course we want to support immigrants, and so we can do both of those by participating in those events, in this event. So please really make it a, a plan to participate and uh, to march with the Democrats if possible. Um, team of volunteers to get, uh, where's Karen? Team of volunteers to get C4C Salinas up and running. Do you want to say something about that? I, I do. I also would like to ask my wonderful volunteer helping with voting cards to please help the people at the front of the room. Uh, or else raise your hand and have people come to you because we have people coming in the door. So uh, if you, uh, yes, if you do not know this already, we have a lot of guests tonight, so you may not know this. Uh, we are not only uh, have we maintained this premises here in a non-election year and came out with a lot of money in the bank, we are opening a Center for Change in Salinas. So that will be on April 1st. Uh, I would love a team of people, I would love you to raise your hand tonight and say that you will help me and others get that center open. The vision we have is the um, Chavez March goes right past it. We would love to have signage in English and Spanish. We would like to have the doors open if people need to use the restroom. We'd like to have water. We'd like to just let people know that we are there. And uh, we'll be setting it up throughout the month of April. So if you're not available that first week of April, we still need you. So raise your hand right now with joy, and I'll write down your name. Okay, we have Wes. Wes. We have Dred, we have Sonia, we have Patty, yay, we have Mary Lou, we have Amit. Who else? 
Who else? We have Jill, we have Tyler with one L, we have Adam, Eve Good to see you. Okay, great. We have David, we have Jose, we have Gloria. We bring Leo too. Okay, Leo. Great, we have Aurelio. Thank you so much. Uh, and where will we be? Well, in the past, if you'll recall, we used to share a premises. Uh, we offered a donation to the Labor Council at 931 East Market Street to use their space. We would be there in the afternoons and evenings, and Labor Council would do, it this, do its business the other times. Labor Council is growing and thriving and doing wonderful work, if you don't already know that. And because of that, they've added cubicles, they've added staff, and they don't have any room there. So we had a committee, isn't this strange the way this works? We had a committee to look for a space in Salinas, five people looking all over Salinas. Mary Lou comes to us and says, I think I found this space, you know, I don't know if the price is right or this and that. It's right across the driveway from the Labor Council. Okay. So our address is still going to be 931 East Market. The landlord says we use that address because there's not really an address for the space we're going to be in. So our address is still going to be 931 East Market Street in Salinas. <laughs> Is that something? Yes. I will be in contact with you. Please make sure you leave your phone number or email address on the guest sheet. Thanks. And again, I really want to thank the committee that helped us find this yes. location. Yes. Uh, I'm really proud of this whole committee for supporting this, and it's important that we have a presence in Salina. So thank you. Um, okay. Let's see. I didn't know we were supposed to. So, how much money can you please yes, make the money? Yes, I apologize. I was tending to the front when you were on item 10A. Uh, let's give some money to the United Farm Workers for that march, and somebody suggest an amount. <coughs> suggest an amount? I got 500. I 500. I don't know. Okay, so there's a motion from Anthony for us to donate 500. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Um, Go ahead. So five hundred dollars. That would be the largest amount that we have given, and I think it's a, a great thing. We're doing fine in the bank. We need to make more money. If we give the money, we got to make some more money. But God knows they need it. In the back. By the former treasurer of organizations, I'm wondering what's the status of our treasurer? We have about $30,000 oh. on the bank, but we're also committing to spending about $118,000 on elections <laughs> this year, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you Any other discussion? I, just a possibility. Um, just a question to take if, if, if that, if we throw a little caveat in there and say, if we can utilize your place for phone banking and support the get out the vote as a thank you. Any other discussion? A Tyler? I wonder what my items would come out of I'm sure our treasurer will be able to figure it out. Is this a problem, Holly or Jen? What, what was the question? No, no, no. What line item is to come out of the budget or is this something that you'll be able to figure out, or is this something we need to figure out now? I think it's something we can figure out. Polly? It's something we can probably yeah, figure let's out. Let's not worry about it then. Okay, Adam? I was going to say, let's set up a booth at it and sell some t-shirts or something and call it under these fence. Uh-huh. We're going to join them. We're going to join them. Maybe the women's company, too. I noticed the grass. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? <coughs> yes. Uh, Ron Cheshire, unfortunately I have to bear some bad news to some extent. Because we're very much in support of the United Farm Workers, their right to organize, we're in support of immigrants. Unfortunately, a labor organization ought to really hold up to the values of a labor organization. The building that they purchased in Salinas was not built union. They had a union general contractor, they had a bunch of other contractors that were non-union. We tried to work with them, it didn't happen. I just want you to know that, but I think you ought to go ahead and support the farm workers because it's definitely needed in organized drive in this, this area. The building trades will not be supporting them in regards to their march, but 
again, workers need to organize here, and we're in support of that. But we certainly wish that our brothers and sisters could have stood a little more united with us in their decision to go ahead and remodel their building. Thank you. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to draw the comments to a close and call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstention? All right, motion passes. Thank you. Um, 10C, Resolution of Support for Measure I on Monterey County's June ballot. And uh, the, this came to me, and I turned it over to the Issues Committee, and so I'm going to ask Bill to sort of uh, introduce this. Uh, yeah, so it landed in our lap, and it seemed to be the most pressing issue on our agenda. Right. The door um, should be Is there any chance that Wendy or Can you get it to go work here? Oh, oh. Yeah. So, well, would you like to speak that is for a moment about yeah, one, yeah. one minute. Yeah. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to introduce this is yeah. Superintendent P.K. Dippenbach for uh, MPUSD, and I get to serve on the board and represent the Monterey County Board of Trustees. Thank you for having me. Thank you. 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 Thank work to do in terms of our facilities to get them up to 21st century standards. Um, so essentially we are uh, looking at infrastructure such as HVAC, uh, roof, uh, re replacing over 100 portables that are across the district. Um, the need is tremendous. We did a facilities analysis, came back at about $680 million to get all our facilities up to 21st century standards. So um, we are asking the community for our for support. Uh, every dollar is spent uh, locally. None can be used for administrative salaries, um, and, it, and, it, and the state or federal government can't take any money. So we're we're trying to prepare our students for the 21st century in 20th century facilities, and this investment will help us make a huge step forward. So we're so that's why we're asking for your support. Thank you. And um, is there a recommendation from the issues committee on this? Yeah. Go ahead. Natalie. Natalie. Oh, yeah. Well, we were voting to uh, approve, <coughs> and um, we support the measure. And as a teacher for MTUSD, I can say that we have spent money. We've had a bond before, but that, was, that came up. And we have spent that money. I have a heater that works now, and I have a new ramp to get into my portable. Because I'm one of those people in a portable, although I like mine. But, um, but we really do need new facilities. We, don't, we have open classrooms from the 70s. That's one reason I'm in a portable, because I don't want to be in the odd with four other teachers and, and, and no ceiling or no walls and stuff. So we really need this money. And, the, and from what I saw, the last of our money, um, they really did use it well. Um, they, they made improvements in our schools. It's just that you can't see them. They're like internal, like, you know, you can come and see my heat though. Anyway, so please, please approve it. Okay, so if there's a motion from the <coughs> issues chair, yes, issues committee approve the idea. Okay, so make a motion. I would entertain okay, a motion. I'll make a, a motion ten. that the uh, comes. Page there will be once the motion's on the yeah. table. Page ten. Yeah. There will uh, uh, support support the special on the Okay. Um, okay. And then discussion. I thought I heard somebody back here. Go ahead. One refuse from the Nose. I was also one of the uh, key organizers that helped organize uh, Modern Bay Community Power. Modern Bay Community Power is going to be, be uh, uh, coming online here pretty soon and started since uh, March 1. Schools, for example, any public facilities can access that money. Should be put together for polls and stuff, and it could be used. Thank you. And it could be used for uh, interest rate uh, reduction and maybe a uh, good deal that we took out right now. Consider that, please. Thank you very much. And for the rest of your elected officials, keep that in mind. Twenty-four to thirty million dollars yearly for the rest of our life, and we need to have a plan because they just voted in uh, and authorized the legitimacy of an advisory committee to that. Uh, modern day community power, and that's where we can all come in and be more active. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. Perfect. Um, okay, anybody else have a comment? Levon. Is any of those funds earmarked for uh, the classroom or the food maintenance? Yeah. 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 You mean like teachers, or do you mean yeah. physical yeah. things? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's a facilities bond, and so everything goes to the physical grounds, the buildings. Yeah. This says fixing science, technology, art, and math classrooms, fixing roofs and portables, plumbing, gas, sewer, electrical systems, and updating their career technical education and workforce training programs. Okay. Dr. Niffenbaugh, are, are the funds earmarked already? Are they more broad? Yeah, so in, in the in the bond, any one of the facilities uh, can be um, eligible for funding. And what what we will do is create a facilities advisory committee, and that consists of community members, parents. Uh, union members um, to help uh, create the priority list because if we have six hundred eighty million dollars worth of need, we hopefully will have two hundred thirteen million. Uh, we're going to have to make some priorities, but every school yeah. in the district will see improvement as a result. Of this. Like to okay. Yeah, we do have a measure P fly that has information about what we did with our last bond and it lists of every school site and what what actions we need. Okay, Anthony. I was just going to say that um, you know the buildings in which students learn are so important to our students' success. Uh, having gone to the same school high school district and all the same school districts in it, both of those school districts have where the student moves in portables, and it's not fun because when it's really cold, it gets really cold, and when it's really hot, it's really hot. <laughs> so um, you know any opportunity to support children, uh, to pick up on, and Wendy's going to be uh, staunch advocate for children. Any other questions, discussion? If not, okay. I'll give you another minute. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, so I just hope that this is going to be trying to be a fair process, and then there's still a lot of kids who are hungry, and I feel that are in this classroom don't do very well because I keep getting reports from the nutritionists that, that are attending. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you want to respond? Yeah, yeah I, I just want to say that in Measure P, we just dedicated over $10 million to Seaside High School to replace the portables that are there. Um, so so that's that's one. And then uh, also as an eligible um, eligible project could be uh, expanding our central kitchen so that we can get better food. food. And, and Dr. Dippo, before you leave, I'd encourage you maybe if you can check, check with Ms. Yes. Stone and find out her contact. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, comments? All right, then I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of supporting this resolution in support of measure I, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Any abstention? All right, pass, pass it unanimously. Thank you. We're having a party. I'll leave the invitation. Taco truck. We'd love, everyone's invited. We'd love to have you join us. Thank you. Uh, uh, April 14th, 3 to 6, at uh, Superintendent Dippenbaugh's house. Every it's a busy day. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, the next item, item 10 D. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's co-sponsor the National Coalition Building Institute's community event, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Saturday, May 19th in Seaside. I'm not sure if we're being asked to co-sponsor. If we need, I mean, I think the board would obviously be really supportive of this. So Elena so Loomis, who could not be here tonight, requests that we co-sponsor this so that we are assertive and open and out there in the community about um, being an ally and right. being supportive of what they represent. Right. So we co-sponsor the National Coalition Building Institute. Second. Okay, so motion by Tyler, second by Phil. And for those of you who don't know, um, it, yeah, there is information on the page. The Coalition uh, Building Institute is all about building bridges and connections between people of different races, different <laughs> backgrounds. Uh, any discussion on that? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion passes well. Thank you.
Okay, so we're now going to move on to subcommittees. The first one is the endorsement. This is where we will be addressing endorsements for the primary. And I want to first of all just check again. If you might have gotten here late, you didn't pick up your voting card, you can get your voting card from Joe right here. And um, also a reminder, if you are the primary and you're here, then obviously you vote and your alternate doesn't. If you are an alternate and your primary is not here, then you vote. Okay? So obviously only one for each. And there should yeah, there's only one card. So your alternate, if your alternate and primary are both here, only the primary should have a card, right? And then you can just literally hand it to them. The idea is to keep track of the votes in the room. Okay, okay there's a couple things I need to say before we get started. First of all, um, I'll be asking anyone who has a conflict of interest to state that. Basically, a con we have a conflict of interest policy. If you are working for a candidate, that's considered a conflict of interest. If you are a volunteer, that is not a conflict of interest. But if you are working for someone and um, receiving some sort of compensation, you need to announce that at this time. There's nothing wrong with that. Perfectly normal. But then you cannot participate in the vote for that candidate, obviously. Your alternate can, but you can't. So I'm going to just start with that if there are any announcements of conflict. Yes. I confess, I have been paid by Richard Gage, so I'm going to step aside. Okay. Do you want to handle your card? Okay. Anyone else? Clarification. Okay. Hold on a second. Clarification, Bob. For example, the only one that he can vote for is the candidate that he works for. Endorsement. Right. Then he if can he still vote for them. Yeah. He's, one vote. He's choosing to just have you. Yeah. Any other announcements of a conflict of interest? David. I, David Kong, uh, have a conflict of interest for the District 3 Supervisor Committee. Okay. My uh, organization, well, well, I belong to the Minnesota Democratic Club. Uh, they had a meeting and they endorsed the letter candidate. They endorsed the uh, local. So. Okay. So I'm going to excuse myself only from that. Okay. And you have an alternate here? Yes. Okay. That's my question. Do I, do I vote for him? So, David, you can give your card to Ted, please. Um, for that vote. Okay, um, any other announcements of a conflict of interest? Alright, I don't see any. Alright, I need to say something else having to do with endorsements and with the Central Committee. We've got, and what David said, as well as other things. So we may have a lot of folks who aren't familiar with our bylaws. And I just want to <coughs> remind everyone about our bylaws. Um, our bylaws basically say that if you are a member of this central committee, a primary or an alternate, you cannot publicly advocate that voters should not vote for the endorsed candidate of the Democratic Party for any reason. And also, you, public, you cannot publicly give support to or a vow preference for a candidate who is not a registered Democrat, unless this committee expressly authorizes it. So that's just very important for folks to know. Now for elected officials who are not members of this central committee but are Democrats, if you publicly support a Republican, we can't stop you, but it is something that this committee will consider during endorsements. And it's something that we're asking candidates, because we are the Democratic Party. We're not the Republican Party. We're not the no party preference. We are the Democratic Party. That doesn't mean we always love all of our candidates as much as we might, but that's, we are a party. That's what being a party means. One minute, let me finish. So if you are an elected official, or if you are a member of this committee, and you have endorsed a Republican, I'm going to strongly encourage you to withdraw that endorsement. If you're a member of this committee 
you will be getting a letter asking you to do so if you don't do so voluntarily. Um, you can be removed from the Central Committee with a two-thirds vote of this membership. I don't want to do that. Just, just tell the person, I'm sorry, I'm a, Demo I'm a member of the Democratic Committee, I can support you outside of the public, I can support you behind the scenes, I can give you $99, but I can't appear uh, on your website, I can't let my name appear on your website, I can't post things about you, supporting you. That's how it is, folks, okay? And, and for, um, for electeds who are not members of the Center Committee, again, it is something that we will look at. It's a question we're asking the candidates. So uh, I hope I made that as clear as I can. Now, comments on that yeah. question? I could be wrong, but it's my understanding that Democratic clubs are chartered by the Central Committee. So are there any other sanctions against the Democratic club that endorses the Republican? Thank you. So for clubs, clubs are allowed to endorse, but they have to endorse Democrats. You could choose to endorse someone different from us, but they'd have to be a Democrat. Um, so otherwise, you could lose your charter. Okay. Yes, sir. What I heard is that the Greenfield Democratic Club. They are not a chartered club. They're not a chartered club. Greenfield Democrats are not a chartered club. They have not been for a couple of years. They have not had a seat on this. Um, David uh, is uh, a representative here by, uh, he's a statutory member. He was voted in as a representative of Board of Supervisors District 3. He is not here representing his club. Greenfield Democrats, you'll notice they didn't appear under the club's portion. They have not chartered. They are not a chartered club. So another matter is using or implying you represent Democrats in your area. We also will be looking at that. Who is the voice? We speak with one voice. And we're going to be very clear about who the Democrats are, who is playing by the rules within the Democratic Party, and who is not. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, and Alan's just reiterating it. Yeah. And also, one second, those of you who are delegates to the state party are also under that obligation that if you publicly support um, a candidate in a race where there is a Democrat that's endorsed either by the state party or by the local party, or if you publicly support a non-Democrat, that is also grounds to lose your status as a state party member. Dominic. I just wanted to clarify because you said for Republicans a few times. Yeah. We just can't support non-Democrats. Non-Democrats. So yes. it's not it's Republicans, Independents, Green Party, whatever. Correct. Yes. Okay, so any other questions? Anyone not understanding that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening and for taking um, whatever actions you need to, to remedy this. Ms. Stone has a question. Yes. So the question is, how do we know who is and who isn't? And we're able to check that with the voter registration. So I'd also like to add to that is, so I'm going to speak now as chair of the endorsement subcommittee, but I'll answer your question as chair of the credentials committee, uh, Levon. So uh, in the bylaws, which you all received and you all took an oath to uphold, and the ones that are on our website and available to anyone here, um, certain members, it's just the honor policy. If you are a statutory member, that means you are an elected official or you're a board of supervisor rep. Um, it, that's called being a statutory member. Whoever your alternate is, the bylaws say it is supposed to be someone in your district and someone, if possible, but not required, who closely resem resembles you, whatever that is. Gender, age, ethnicity, whatever, however you want to define yourself. But it doesn't have to be. Um, but that's just the honor system. There is no check on it unless someone complains to the credentials committee and says, I know this person is sitting on the central committee and he or she is not a Democrat, then we would explore it, right? We don't randomly go around and check people. Uh, we're required to check people if they are a certain, if they're a club member. Clubs are a different category of member, so that's why it takes two months for that process, because we do need to verify that they are a Democrat, and we do look at if they have endorsed uh, other candidates. We just look at things. So you're saying, you're on the 
they just go by the owner system, but they don't really have to be here. Unless someone complains. Yeah, we don't go we don't go along, we don't go around checking on everybody. We we believe that we believe people unless someone tells us statutory member, the bylaws say, no scrutiny unless someone complains. So we're not going to call someone a liar unless someone accuses them. Um, I have a question. Can you um, lose your right of voting if, you, if you're um, endorsing a Republican? You mean? You know, like, sometimes the flyers come out and then the, the Republican has all the names they um, endorsed, endorsed by this, this, this. Yeah. Can you, um, lose so your if there are here? people who have done that, I'm not going to like lay the hammer down today. But what I am doing is letting people know it's time to remedy that and call that candidate and ask him to have your name removed. Okay. Yeah. Same with if we find out that an elect, a Democrat elected official is supporting a Republican. Yeah. Is this the venue where we bring it up? You could bring it up here again. We can't. We can't. We can't take away that person's position, obviously. But what we can do, and probably will do, is consider it for future endorsements. It's something that will be discussed. All right. So, if there's no other questions on this, then let's um, turn out to the endorsement process. I want to just review the process a few years ago. You, okay. Go ahead, Karen. Thank you. Um, so I, I was, I'm chair of the endorsement committee, and I would like uh, the people who are on the uh, endorsement committee to please uh, raise your hands. You'll be hearing from them later, but please raise your hands. We have Alicia Gaines, Mary Lou Alejo, Sonia Heredia, David Burnett, Ron Cheshire, who's not paying attention over here, and, uh, Natalia, and Natalia Molina is is not here. Uh, but but. She had a work thing and she couldn't participate. Uh, she helped us behind the scenes but didn't uh, vote. So uh, much of what I was going to say, Alan covered, which I'm grateful for. First, I want to start right now with the votes in the room. I would like everyone who is voting, one person, if your alternate is here, to raise your cards. And I would like multiple people to help me count silently. And then we will share the number. Please raise your cards high. Oh, look, you please, to please raise your heart card seven. high. And leave it there. And this is if you're voting. So if you're an alternate and your primary is here, don't hold it up. <clears throat> yeah, they sh alternate shouldn't have it. I told them to just have it. Hold it flat rather than sideways because we can't see a sideways card. Hold it facing us, please. I have 29. I have 30. I have 30. Okay. I missed one. Okay. I got 30. I went up and counted the sign-in sheet, and I got 30, and we have three people that said 30. So we're going to go for 30. So um, if, and, and what we'll do, what the uh, procedure is going to be, is we will ask who is abstaining first. We pull out the abstentions, then we have a body of people who will be voting on a given motion, whatever that motion is. And it's 60% of that. If it ends up being a fraction, you have to, no, no uh, fragments of people, fractions of people. No we got to go up. If it's 18.3, we go up to 19. Ooh. And that will all be decided and clarified until, for those of you for whom this is very clear, the reason we want to go over it is because we always hear afterwards that it wasn't clear to people. So we're going to reiterate and reiterate and reiterate. Okay, so I want to. Um, I just want to say what if anyone is having a question about whether they should recuse themselves now would be the time to ask questions so far we've only we had David is having this alternate and Anthony's having this alternate okay no problem a question yes one just for comments on it when I was on the Hartnell school board I asked you guys for an endorsement you refused to endorse me because uh, I was so upset at the Democratic Party that I registered as declined state. You know, I cannot get your endorsement. So please uh, don't, if, if they're not Democrats, please don't put their name on there so it's not a question and us pointing fingers that they are, they're not, and rumors and whatever. But just make it clear, whoever's on the ballot, 
because you guys already been okay. Thank you. Okay, there's something I, um, thank you very much. Love you, Juan. But if you are not a delegate at this go. time, I'm yes. going to close off comments to people who are not delegates. So if you're a delegate, primary or alternate, and you have something to say, raise your hand. But folks who are um, observing, please, we've got a lot to do. So go ahead. So um, again, I just want to call uh, the, to the attention of the California Democratic Party bylaws about county central committees. A Democratic candidate for not, uh, we're in charge of um, all of the endorsements within <coughs> county lines. That's what we're doing. And in the requirements is, in order for the endorsement of this uh, central committee to become official, one of the items is, it must be, an endorsement shall be extended only to Democrats. Now, I can't believe that, that, that some people have that question, but it's been coming up the past few days. So, um, with that being said, um, I want to tell you what our process was. In Monterey County, uh, there were uh, six seats. Superintendent of Schools, Board of Supervisors 2, Board of Supervisors 3, Assessor Recorder, Auditor Controller, and Sheriff. We looked at all of those races. We were charged last month with, with, with having the expedited process. We were to wait until the uh, closing of the filing period, which was extended to Wednesday instead of the Friday in, in several cases because incumbents did not run. And then we hit the ground running the, the Thursday morning uh, we determined nobody is going to get endorsed without an interview and filling out a form. Every contact, every candidate was contacted and was offered that. We're not obligated by our process to offer them. They need to come to us, but we extended that. Okay? And of those people, um, we were able to interview people. Then we were able to sit down together yesterday, compare notes. The goal, my goal, was not majority rules. We've made too much progress in this party, in this local party. There, there's a lot of hurt. Every election, there's a lot of hurt. And we've spent all last year building back these relationships. It's good. There are people going to walk out of this room very disappointed tonight. We have to stay whole. There are enemies out there that'll, that are much more dangerous than anybody in this room. We have to stay united. I told them I'm seeking consensus on all of our endorsements, not a simple majority rule. And we could have done that. I just want to tell you, we could have done that. And we didn't. We got consensus on all but one race, and one race that was one vote that someone could not bring themselves to support our recommendation, but that was one vote out of six races. Everything else was unanimous. Okay, so. Um, You'll be hearing uh, one minute each from different people uh, on this. I also want to I also want to let you know we were not trying to corner the market on our committee because we had people from we had uh, Seaside, South Salinas, North Salinas, South County, uh, Monterey, Marina, right? And we also had different political views. We had people that are like way left as far left as you can go. You're looking at her. And you have people that are more very conservative and everybody in between. So we were not trying to corner the market. Here we go. So, um, so what we're going to do tonight is uh, you're going to hear about each of those candidates a minute each from someone who. Well, we're going to do one race at a time. Who's who was? Nope. We're gonna we're going to make one motion. We're going to make a motion that you accept our endorsement. That's the first thing we're going to do. But right now, you're going to hear from each of our people about these different races. And first will be Sonia. One minute. Okay. I'm, I'm can you, here. Can you, excuse me. Can you read the whole name? Endorsement. Excuse me, Sonia. Wayne's in the back. She has the floor. No, he's asking a question. He's right here. Hey, would you read the whole name? Here? We'll do our best. We'll try to speak. She's talking. She'll tell you who she is. Okay. My name is Sonia Heredia, and I'm here to um in support of the new gas um for superintendent of the county. I think she has a background of being a teacher, administrator, and being a deputy a superintendent, assistant superintendent. I think she has a, a good um elements and key to um be a county super um superintendent and to provide quality um, education for all students countywide and also bring the morale of our teachers back. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, Alicia, please stand up and let them know. My name is Alicia Gaines um, and I'm here to um, 
big support for, for Regina Gage. Um, my recommendation is to endorse Regina Gage because she is great for change in Prunedale. She is a wonderful person. She sits on the board. She is the executive director of Meals on Wheels. She has. She sits. On, she is the president of the Democratic Women of Monterey County. She is also a member of this committee. She. <laughs> She has a long list of things. Only the good things. I know the Regina kind of personally, and I think she is well is good for change in Prunedale. Um, there has been a Republican sitting in Prunedale for a long time, and Regina, I think, is the person that can flip flip Prunedale into a Democratic uh, seat or, or county. Um, I just think she'd be all around good. She's also cared for the homeless. She has sit, sat on the uh, Dorothy's Kitchen board. Um, she's a good all around candidate for this. Thank you, Alicia. So I see that some hands up. I see some uh, people offering approval, but I also see someone with a hand up. If you can't hear, move forward. We're not going to take questions right now after these reports. Then you can ask some questions. What office is she running for? You didn't say. Supervisor District. of District 2. Thank you. Um, That's important. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm going to, and I'll reiterate all of this at the end. Before you, when you vote, it will be very clear what you're voting on. Um, okay, 18. Somebody write down 18 is 60 percent, 30 if everybody stays in. Okay. So uh, I'm reporting on uh, Board of Supervisor Race 3. It was not my choice, my preference, because I'm doing a lot of talking here. My preference was that it, be all, that it would be all committee members doing that, but Natalia could not make it here tonight, and she wasn't there last night. So you got me. What you're going to hear from the endorsement committee regarding Board of Supervisors Race 3. First, I want to tell you there, was, uh, there were two Democrats in that race. And we interviewed both of them. Our recommendation is going to be specifically that we move to not endorse, that no one endorses Edgar Alcantara. We are going to encourage him to run for office. We agree he was a wonderful person. Great, he would be great on school board or city council. Not ready for board of supervisors. He is not ready for that race. So we are going to, in our motion, say motion to not, to not, do not endorse this person. And the other uh, person that we chose to recommend endorsing is Alejandro Chavez, and we believe that he is the most qualified uh, Democrat and that he can win that seat for us. The next is going to be for Sheriff Mary Lou Alejo. I have my student here. Uh, we have decided to endorse uh, Scott Day from Monterey County Chair. He, he has answered all the questions, and then uh, we all agree, and we uh, he answered a, a question according to what we were expecting of him. Uh, he is with the Women's Rights and Equality of Women, not only outside but inside the, the jail. Uh, he's going to work with women inside there, make sure that the women have uh, equal rights inside there too. He has 15 years of being a deputy, so that makes him eligible to run for a chair. He has been sitting in the City Council District 1 and is in the Finance uh, Committee Department. He also has a history of uh, graduating and getting his bachelor's and master's in polit political science. He's a member of the Deputy Association for six years, and he is now the president for two years of the uh, Deputy Chair of the Association, so that makes him uh, a hardworking guy, knows a lot of what's going on inside there. He's interested in transparency with in government and increasing public engagement. Uh, he has answered the question of uh, the needs of, uh, of uh, language barriers in, uh, in, in jail, you know, making sure that uh, he hires bilingual staff so that uh, these language barriers will not uh, make uh, persons that are undocumented that don't speak uh, uh, English less. Uh, so he's willing to hire deputies, chairs, uh, social workers that are bilingual too, to help out in, in that area. Uh, he's also wants to cover areas that are not being covered right now, which uh, most of the areas the chair don't cover is Greenfield, King City, and Southern Valley. You know? He uh, talked about an incident where he had to ride, wait a whole hour just to reach to a domestic violence over there, and by the time he got there, uh, this lady was beaten very bad. Uh, he wants to improve the, uh, uh, with the 
he is coming back into the community. He wants to make sure that they are have uh, vocational trade programs for, uh, study, and that they graduate, get their GNTs, and have some literature, literature uh, for them to, uh, you know, improve uh, themselves and provide prevention programs of drug and alcohol. Also, he wants to try to make sure that their social workers and health service there before they're released from jail and make sure they have follow up, you know, because that is very bad needed also. He wants to protect and he certainly wants to protect the community and everyone else, but uh, not having police uh, policing the people like ICE, in which uh, media and family are separated, and uh, treating the, uh, the community with fairness and respect. A sheriff that will reflect the diversity and values of the people and making sure that they follow also inside the jail. He wants to cut down uh, from having too many upper level staff and improving the cost of taxpayer by looking to other resources and lower ranks and civilians that can help inside also. And making sure uh, that the uh, deputy is not overworked and because that uh, also brings their health down. And sometimes they are left to have to deputies outside, so he wants to make sure that they, that they are also getting the uh, benefits that they need in order to keep control of the community. So he makes a great candidate. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, Mary Lou. The next person will be the assessor, and that's Ron Sheshire. Can you hear me now? What? <laughs> <laughs> the, committee, the committee has chosen to endorse Steve Vagnini for assessor recorder. Steve's been working for the assessor recorder's office for for decades. He's been in administration. He's the head person there. He is the assessor recorder, and I think this would be his fourth term that he's running for. And I've also talked to him and he said it will be his last. Mr. Vagnini uh, is uh, very much a Democrat. I've known him personally for almost 40 years. He holds Democratic values. Steve works within the community. He started Guitars Not Guns. He just, you know, he's, here it is, a person that's in a nonpartisan office you have a good Democrat that's there. Okay? What more can you really say about the guy? He holds democratic values. I mean, if you were to sit there and you were to hold our values up, Steve, do you support this, 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 or this? Now, I don't know what SEIU's got to say about him as far as an administrator, but it doesn't seem like there have been any complaints or many complaints out of the department. He honors and he cherishes his workers. He seeks their such and he will work with them as much as possible and the main thing that Steve I think emphasized was his service to the people regardless of status the service to the people of this community regardless of status so the committee endorsed him and we hope will you endorse him also thank you thank you Ron and now uh, David Burnett will talk about the auditor uh, clerk controller's office yes uh, I interviewed with Ron uh, Rupa Shaw and uh, when he asked her a series of questions, and she was very clear and very knowledgeable, the Office of Auditor is a uh, very powerful position within a county administration. I worked for a county for over 23 years and uh, came uh, into conflict, or not conflict, but uh, contention with an auditor uh, many, many times. But she seemed to be a person of principle. She seemed to understand the uh, responsibilities of the office. She gave very clear and concise answers uh, to the duties that were specified and to our inquiries. As you know, there's a, been a, uh, a news item about the department that there was an 18, uh, 18 almost $19 million overrun of a, of a project, and the current auditor failed to, res to let the supervisors know that the, this is what was happening. I worked in the uh, uh, information services uh, area with the county of Santa Cruz. Uh, project overruns are quite frequent, uh, especially when implementing a county-wide uh, budget system. Uh, but having said that, uh, not reporting and not letting your, your superiors know that things are not going as is planned was a serious deficiency. Uh, we asked her about that, and uh, her responses to that were not clear. Uh, if someone from her campaign is here, we have some suggestions of how she might better answer how she might better answer the question uh, as to what was her response and how did she, uh, you know, uh, handle that particular uh, circumstance. But uh, as uh, Ryan and I's uh, uh, 
considered opinion and, and with the committee, we, we talked about this, and we feel that Rupo would be the uh, best candidate for the Office of Auditor for the County of Monterey. What's her name again? Her name is Rupa Shaw. Um, so uh, thank you very much for that, David. Um, if you are curious about what the questionnaires look like, um, uh, just send an email. Uh, Alan's email address is on the website. My email address is on the website. And I'll forward those to, those to everyone who is a member of this committee or an alternate was given uh, the questionnaire. Uh, also, if you haven't been around for a while, we've recommitted re our commitment to labor. So every candidate was asked about labor. And uh, also, we recommitted by a vote of this body a few mo months ago, uh, being crystal clear about a woman's right to choose every candidate, even those dealing with crunching numbers, was asked about a woman's right to choose, and we will not endorse them. We took a vote in this body that we will not endorse anyone who does not agree with it. They all agreed. So we're trying to get serious with what you have told us you want to get serious about. And uh, let people know up front, what, if, if we help you, we endorse you, support you, you get elected, here's the standard we're going to hold you to. And when re-election time comes around, same thing. Um, because that's what you said you want to do. So, um, so in that being said, excuse me. So that being said, just I think I called uh, uh, Mr. Alcantara Eduardo. His name is Edgar, because I kept getting that mixed up. Sorry, Edgar Alcantara. So what we've got here is a motion to uh, a recommendation to endorse the candidate, uh, superintendent of schools candidate, the one superintendent for schools. I'll say the names: uh, Deneen Gus for superintendent of schools. Regina Gage for Board of Supervisors District 2, Alejandro Chavez for Board of Supervisors District 3, Steve Agnini for Assessor, uh, Rupa Shaw for Auditor, and Scott Davis for Sheriff. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try one motion. I'm gonna make a motion. We're gonna try this. My motion is gonna be to accept the endorsement committee's recommendations. I object. And, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make that motion. And uh, and that's that's the whole thing. We're gonna see. So there's a motion. Is there a second? If, if there's a second. There. Thank you. Right. And so what my intention is is to see if we have high agreement in this room that you trust the process and you agree with what's been presented to you. Now, if that doesn't pass, then we can go to other things. Or if someone has a concern about one race or two races, you can offer a friendly amendment that we pull that one out but i'd like to try this folks to see so the motion stands and now the chair okay continues. okay so i've heard discussion shows there's somebody yeah I'll that is not how our bylaws say we do the endorsements we endorse race by race not in a consensus i don't know on the auditors was there another democrat we have not been provided with enough information we know nothing about you know, was another uh, Democrat running against the auditor? Uh, they were not interviewed. And that was discussed at, at the beginning before you but came? But that information has not been given to us. Yes. So our bylaws say we vote by, by each separate race, not by consensus. Right, so not the bylaws. We have a policy and, policy and procedure. And we waived that policy and procedure last month when we uh, put those aside and had an expedited process, which was to come back to you this month with the recommendation. We did not send out formal letters to everyone and wait 15 days to get the letters back. We didn't do any of that. We picked up the phone and called people. So we put that procedure on hold. It's not on the bylaws. So again, I would put forth this motion to accept all of them unless you have a concern and want to pull someone out so that at least we'll get a container uh, so to so I, I just need to be honest. I, I don't believe we waived all of the policy. I think we did expedite the process, but I don't think we would. I, I, I think it would be better if we just go race by race. I think in the end, we may end up the same. We may not. But I, I just think what I'm hearing from people is a feeling they want to hear, they want to participate. I, that would be my recommendation. There is a motion on the table, however, to do a blanket endorsement. Um, um, if the chair, this is a surprise to me, 
And so I um, respect for my colleague, the chair, I'm going to withdraw my motion. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so what we... Um, yeah, so go through one race by race, please. Please, okay. Uh, yes. So first, your so, the first, so what we will do? Um, what we will do? We're going to start with. Um, we're going to start with the auditor controller race. Motion. Motion to endorse Rupa Shaw in the auditor's race. Do I hear a second? I'll take it. Great. Slow down, please. The second has to be from somebody not on the committee. Is there somebody not on the committee? I'll yes, second. Patty said. Patty okay, said. Okay. Um, so there is a motion on the table to endorse Rupa Shaw. The other candidate is Darren Huber. You heard from the committee um, their rationale, why they wanted to support Rupa Shaw. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes. Go yes, ahead. There is. Discussion is what, one minute. As it was before. Uh, the, the committee brings back the information and then we have a chance to hear from the candidate. And I heard from the other. I mean, okay, not okay. I've got to interrupt. There, that is not part of our policy. The candidates, if we had all of the candidates come and speak, this meeting would go on. No, all I'm night. not talking about all the candidates. I'm talking about the candidates that we uh, talk about to be endorsed. That's not our policy. And That's not our policy. Have, no, our policy, excuse me. Our policy is we have an endorsement committee. They have they have received a application from the candidates. They've reviewed them. They're making a recommendation. Now we all had that uh, that excuse me. We all had that information several days ago to read. Uh, you now have an opportunity to comment. And maybe you disagree with the committee. You have a right to disagree with the committee. You have a right to ask a question of the committee. Let me finish, please. And then, and then, once you're once once that's done, you have a minute. Anybody else wants to speak as a minute? Then we will vote. Okay. So please go ahead. My thing is, the information sounds good coming from the committee, but I have not seen these people and heard. You know, just. We need to see who it is. I mean, it's like voting for the sun when it don't shine. I would like to see who these people are. I ha I know a couple of them, but I don't know the rest of them. And it's all good to hear what the committee is saying, but I have been on the committee for years, and I have never had an endorsement committee to come back and the person not be able to speak. Okay, that is not our policy to have the candidates speak. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable supporting uh, a recommendation, you can either abstain at the beginning, or you can vote no endorsement. Okay? Anyone else want to speak? Bob? Was the other candidate interviewed by the committee? No. Uh, no. <laughs> they de he declined to be interviewed due to a personal uh, urgency that arose. We do have a questionnaire. He did complete a questionnaire. It was given to everyone. I did offer uh, to his uh, campaign representative that his campaign representative interview in his stead because it says that we require an interview. It doesn't say we have to interview the candidate. So I offered that a designee be interviewed. That was not possible. I asked that a letter uh, be given for us to read. That was not possible. Uh, and he had good reasons, you know, uh, which I'm not besmirching him for that. Any other comments? Gary? Uh, this is the way we've done it for decades. I mean, and in November, it was going to be dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens right. of candidates. Right. They can't all come and speak to us. That's why you sign it to a subcommittee that prepares questionnaires and, and interviews people. And we have to trust that the process and the people that do that work um, is. Good work. Yeah. Okay, any, any, thank you, Gary. Anything else? Are you going to ask about extensions? Extensions? Absolutely. Yeah, I will. I will. Any other comments? Uh, Bob and then Helen. Uh, am I correct in my understanding that the other candidate has only recently moved to this area? We don't have that information. We were given the questionnaire again. If you could refer to the questionnaire, indicates that. 
has a home locally and lives in commutes to another area to work. That's not unusual. Holly, Ahmed, and Adam. Um, I might be confusing the other candidate with somebody else um, because I, I know one of them has a very strong candidate, a Democrat who's a very strong candidate, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on my comment, I think. They both recently became uh, Democrats. They formerly were no party preference, but that in no way affects our uh, choice because our rules do not require that you be a Democrat for a certain amount of time. One of them worked. Are the what is the one you are endorsing work for? Work within the assessor's office or yes. the auditor's Correct. office? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, on it. I think uh, overall that is the democratic process. We have over 190 races coming up next year. This body selects a group of eight or ten people to go out and talk to all these candidates kind of sort of shake the field up and then come up with the recommendation that in their opinion is the best candidate. So I, I think the process is fair and I think they have done a lot of legwork on our behalf. Thank you. Adam, just to answer Bob's question, Darren and his family moved to the Monterey Peninsula in 2012. Thank you. Anyone else either have a question or a comment on this race? Uh, for Auditor Clerk Controller, the recommendation is Rupa Shaw, the other candidate is Darren Huber. No? Okay, then I'm going to ask if you are going to abstain, if you would hold your card up, if you are abstaining on this vote. Do we have any abstentions? I see one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's six, seven. Five. Okay, 23. so then uh, raise your cards if you will be voting. You're voting in the 23. Uh, uh, I have a team helping. Karen, with seven extensions, 60% is 14. I have a spreadsheet. Does it show, and it shows uh, fractions? I've rounded up from 13 to 24. Wait a minute, I didn't see Jen in the back. 23? I think it was 23. Yeah. Okay, so we got 23, and Tom, what is uh, 14? 14. Okay, so those of you who um, uh, did not abstain, those 23, will now vote. Um, first, I will ask if you support Ruba. Then I will ask if you support Darren. And then I will ask if you are voting no endorsement. Okay. That is how it works. That is, that is how it works. I'm sorry, but I really apologize very carefully. Okay. So, um, those of you who would like to vote and support the recommendation of the committee for Rupa Shaw, hold up your card. Thank you very much. Uh, Rupa Shaw is endorsed. All right, what's the next race? Um, motion to endorse. Motion to endorse Steve Bagnini for assessor. Is there a second from somebody not on the committee? On uh, one, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Questions or discussion? One minute. If you have a question or. Discussion, comment about Steve Bagnini. Yeah, comment. Uh, in my other life, I'm a licensed real estate broker. I have worked with Steve all throughout the downturn in real estate, and he was always there, ready to meet with people and uh, address their situations and adjust the actual assessed values to what the market reflected fairly quickly. So I find him pretty fair and straightforward. So I have a comment. Um, I have had interactions with him as a council member. I've always found him to be fair and reasonable. He, um, uh, as was mentioned, sports guns, not um, guns. Concern was brought to me. I just need to share it with folks that on um, a Republican website, 
Uh, Judge Phillips, he is listed as an endorsement. I'm still going to support him, but I will be talking to him and asking him to withdraw that endorsement. Um, but I think the committee needs to just be aware of that. I, could you repeat that again? I don't understand. That he is what listed as a endorser for Judge Phillips, who is a Republican, running against. Oh, so he has endorsed. Yes. 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 You make our endorsement contingent on him doing that. That's not the motion. Is that, but is that all? It seems like that automatically removes him until he changes that. No. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there. I don't know if there's any other comments or thoughts about that. It is problematic. Yeah. Would you say that again, only more clearly? If I understood you right, he has, he's listed as having endorsed Judge Phillips. So the person but I still get to one that you've endorsed. No, the person that is the yeah. Democrat that we are considering to endorse. Right, right but he's endorsing right. yes. Judge Phillips, right. who is running against the person that we're considering. Just endorsed. No, we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh, it's, 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 what you said at the beginning of the meeting sounded like if someone endorses a Republican, they can't be. Um, can't be endorsed. endorsed by us. Now, let me clarify again. So, members of this committee alternates or whatever, we absolutely cannot support publicly a non-democrat. Okay. Elected officials, I mean, are they can, I but our only power is to withhold an endorsement. Yeah. So that's where we're at. I'm just letting you know. So if someone wanted to make an amendment, a friendly amendment, they could ask that we make the endorsement contingent on him pulling that uh, support. Yeah, okay. Our endorsement is contingent on. Okay, so that's an alternate motion and yes. second by Bill. All right, uh, James, discussion on no. this. Uh, well, I motion. wanted to add to that that it should be he's done it, does it by the next meeting. You okay with that? Sure. Okay. Ted? When do we have to have these endorsements done by? Tonight. We're making a decision tonight. How can he do this for the next meeting if we have I'm sorry, but we got to go on. Uh, any other questions on this motion? Yeah. Can we move up the timeline on that? Because that's a long period of time. Yeah. Okay, within the week. Okay. And James, can you get that in the record that within the week All right. we are asking that he withdraw his yeah. endorsement? My, my, my point was just that we don't have an indefinite waiting period, so yeah. it's just 30 days. Yeah. Okay, is it clear what the motion is? Yeah. Yeah. And Gary, so go ahead. Just, you know, I, I hear Senator Monty, and he has uh, directed me to, uh, uh, to support Steve Agnese. Okay. Uh, just one quick comment. Um, if we're looking to Judge Phillips' website to see whether that's removed within a week, that's not necessarily under Mr. Benjamin's control. Yeah. He can submit a letter and help with us. Yeah. Uh, Holly. I would also like to know if it's not removed, what does that mean? What does that leave we us with? Well, does I mean, that at, mean at least if just he doesn't send the left, I think I think Tom's point, which is a fair one, and I hope that you will trust the e-board to sort of administer this or manage this, is we're asking him to make a good faith effort to have it removed. But does that mean there's just no endorsement by this committee? In that case, if he doesn't, He's the only Democrat. Yeah. Just, okay. 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 So, is it a clear what the motion is? I see some nodding. So. Then, if you are abstaining, this is the time to hold your card up. If you are abstaining, is there anyone abstaining from this vote? I see one. I see two. Three. Linda and Levon. Anyone else? Uh, three. Okay. So that means we should have 27. 17 is 60%. Okay. Then um, raise your hand if you support the motion endorsing with the provision that he removed with Karazi. Looks to me like I'm yeah, I think you got your number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
23 all back there. I counted 25. 25. Why don't you ask people to raise for the no? So Steve McNeely has endorsed with that caveat. Okay, next one is motion to endorse Scott Davis for Sheriff of Monterey County. Is there a second from Adam? All right, any discussion on this? He actually did come to speak. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, there's been a lot of problems from my perspective. The <coughs> person who is coming to the office, there's limited partnership within the sheriff's department. So is that an issue in this case? Um, well, technically, it's a nonpartisan race, actually, like all of these races are. <laughs> but, I mean. Whoever comes to the sheriff. Yes. Uh, hires his people to be captains, yeah. assistants, and all that sort of thing. So it becomes a highly political thing. So yeah. I'd rather it not I don't, I mean, I don't know that we have any control over that. No. Uh, Robert? As I understand it, there had been a third candidate, and he withdrew and is supporting Scott Davis for sure. Yeah. That's my understanding, too. But we officially had no word on that. All we did is uh, I sent the in uh, information to Jose Mendoza because I was told he was going to, and then they just didn't respond. And when I called to ask why, there you go. Uh, Patty. He had a, um, I guess he announced it in Facebook or yeah. something like that, that he was not running and that Jose Mendoza. Sure. <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion to endorse Scott Davis for sheriff. Is there any other question or com question for the committee or comment? All right, so if you are abstaining from this vote, hold up your card, please. I see one from Levon. Anyone else? No one else is abstaining, so it should have 29 votes. Um, then if you support the endorsement of Scott Davis, Davis, hold up your card, please. Hold it up high. Uh, yes. I got you. Do your best. Definitely a full count. You're not asking for a note. Right? Yeah, it might be easier. <laughs> if you're way over, why not? For the record. 29. All right. There are no There are no notes. Okay, that's the next one. Okay. Okay, so the next motion is motion that motion to that let me how do we phrase this in a way in a motion? Uh, motion that we will we recommend no one endorses Edgar Alcantara. The motion is the committee recommends that no one no member of this committee, no club, no Democrat, uh, endorse Edgar Alcantara. That is the motion. No, so Karen, you should say who you are endorsing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who so, are you endorsing? But there's two separate, there's two, it's a separate motion. It was not, there will be another motion about who we think we should. That's not how, again, the policy says, who are you endorsing? Okay, so, uh, okay, so let it be known that the, that we determined that nobody should, inter should uh, that Edgar's a great guy, but he's not ready for office. Fine. Who are you endorsing? <laughs> Who did you recommend? <laughs> Motion to endorse Alejandro Chavez for Board of Supervisors second, District 3. Second. Okay, second from Dominic. Okay, any discussion or questions for the committee? Okay, so for this one, again, we'll do with the abstentions. I will first call for the votes for Alejandro, then I will call for the votes for uh, our Mr. Alcantara, and then if again, if you want to no endorse, you have that option as well, okay? So who is abstaining? Anyone? I see nobody in abstaining. Okay, so we should have 30 votes. All right, raise your card, and, and so what's our 18. number? 18. 19? 18. 18. Okay. Raise your card if you support the recommendation of Alejandro Chavez.
27. I see 28. I just see Ted in the back. I do not see Ted in the back. That's 28. There you go. Okay, right. so we have 28. Um, how many in support? Raise your card if you're supporting Edgar Alcantara. Raise your card if you are voting no endorsement. You have to vote one way or the other. There are, okay. two there are two people. Okay. Well, that's okay. All right. So we are we are we are endorsing Alejandro Chavez. All right. Next year. Next year. Next year. So again, if you're abstaining, please declare that beforehand because it affects um, it, it affects the percentage. Remember. So I think I know who the two people were, and if you're a no vote, you need to say no. Yeah, you because I was going to make an alternative motion that we endorse Chris Lopez for supervisor. We cannot entertain that. That motion's out of order because Chris Lopez is not a Democrat. So then we abstain. Both right, and I spoke night. to him myself on Sunday night to confirm that. There seemed to be some confusion. Okay, well, let's go on to the next race. Okay, so one is motion to endorse. Where is she? Regina Gates, for Board of Supervisors. So there are seconds from not on the second from uh, Jill. Jill um, Luke's second, James. Okay, any discussion or questions for the committee? Uh, yes, Bob. I taught for 22 years out in North Monterey County, plus 22 years full time. And if there's any area that needs good, transparent, progressive uh, representation on the Board of Supervisors. It's North Monterey County and that nearby area of Salinas. And they're not getting it. And I've gotten to know Regina, and I think that it behooves us to give her a unanimous endorsement. Thank you. David? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make an, a, a motion to make an exception to our procedure to allow the candidate 30 seconds to address the body. Um, I'll grant that. All right, go. Elevator. The other one who's here? 30 seconds? Yes. Yeah. 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 Hello, everyone. I'm Regina Gage. Uh, this is really an honor and how exciting. Um, I'm really excited about running for uh, Board of Supervisors District 2. I think our campaign is great, uh, gaining great momentum. Um, I'm sure most of you know that I we are running against the incumbent, a Republican, who is well-funded by big money and big development, but that's not deterring us. I found my intent before I knew what his intentions are or were. I think that speaks to my courage. Uh, my strength and my uh, my integrity to go forward and as Bob said to give North County the representation that it needs. I think people want somebody who is accessible and accountable to their interests and not the special interests of politicians. So thank you. And then for those of you who are wondering, she is a member of the committee, so she can speak anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd just like to point out that uh, Regina Gates has done something that her opponent has never done, and that is very early on engaged in one of the more simple issues here in Monterey County, and that is the issue of water. So I appreciate the fact that she's reached out to the likes of very close water district to try and understand the real complexities of what's going on. And now it's crystal clear to me, Tom, so thank you for your time. <laughs> Joe? Well, just following up on your comment, Tom, that I don't, no pun intended, but this really is a watershed moment for district. <laughs> <laughs> We've had for so long people that really are, have their own vested interests and have been promoting those interests for years and years and years saying this, having run against one of them. Um, and I just think it's so wonderful that we now have a chance to take back the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the committee? Levon and then Chris. Uh, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just hoping that uh, the change with the following on what we're doing here today and that we're trying to get a chance here our elected officials that we put so much time in that we will be able, that I'll be able to contact them and they'll be able to have time uh, with me and people like me and not just for those who have a good job for the status of Thank you. Uh, Chris. 
Uh, and I, I'd just like to uh, share with, uh, with Regina and the Democratic women for a number of years, uh, both her leadership, her clarity, and basically what uh, strikes me the most is her no BS approach to politics and really being very direct and honest. And it's something that uh, this county uh, needs at that level. And, uh, and the added bonus is if uh, Regina gets on the Board of Supervisors, we'll have three women, which will really make a difference in the way many issues are addressed. And it is a watershed moment uh, for that. And, uh, and if we get uh, also, I think that we could really see a real shift and change in the county. So very important. Thank you. Anyone else? So, although I've been a paid employee of the campaign, what I can tell you about the community is having worked with her since August of last year, there is no person with more integrity and more heart and who just loves the community so much. She's dedicated so much of her life to helping people. When she first reached out to me to work on her campaign, I turned down an offer because I wanted my good friend and mentor Jill to run. But Jill didn't run. Regina reached out to me again. And I said, yes, I'll pay you. Regina is someone who's going to lead the fight on the issues that matter. And she's someone who's actually going to stand up to special needs. Her opponent is not only a Republican, but guess what? He's someone who voted against Century Cities not once, but twice. So we're all as Democrats going to stand up to the fight. Let's stand up at the local level. Let's we'll support the Democrats and we'll support our community and our community's values. And that's Regina. Thank you. Yeah. Can, can we move this love fest to a vote? <laughs> 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 All right, so if you are abstaining, hold up your card. Anybody abstaining? I don't see any abstentions. One, two votes. Um, all right, anybody else? Okay, so we have 28 votes. 17. All right, please then raise your card if you support the recommendation of endorsing the Virginia Page. I think I 29. 28. 28. All right. Um, th and so we do endorse Regina Gage. All right. <laughs> Um, so, motion to endorse Denise Gus for superintendent uh, from, the chair, from the chair of the committee and seconded by Tyler Williamson. Any comments or questions on this? Uh, it's a woman. She was not here. He's, yeah. I was going to say, I'm 90% sure MBTA. What did you say? Uh, our union, our teachers union, MBTA is also endorsing her. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask a question of uh, Sonia Peterson. She made the presentation there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons uh, I'm concerned is the, the pesticide issue even in around school. You guys in Greenfield in the city council here, uh, you get dealt with that. Now, do you, are you aware as to the status of this person should be elected? What the concern is with the spray and drift onto schools and homes near and around agricultural fields is uh, yet Commissioner did agree that half a quarter amount would be adequate and and take a look at that versus what we have now. So so did the committee talk about that or do you have any information? We don't otherwise? have any, uh, any information but I think she's in support or she's been learning and she's not taking Can you see that? Uh, oh, no, yes. I'm sorry. That's a Thank you very much. Um, okay, so anything more about superintendent of schools? Anything else about superintendent of schools? Okay, so anyone abstaining? I see one from Levon. Anyone else abstaining? Okay, done. So it should be 29. Then raise your hand if you support the recommendation to endorse the mean gods. Anyone um, voting no endorsement? 
seeing none, so it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, is that it or is there any more? Uh, nope, that, that is, that's all the races. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughtfulness and really um, discussing it. And uh, we'll move forward and uh, get these Democrats elected. Okay, thank you. Thank you, committee, for doing that. Thank you. Um, so, there is a request that I allow Alejandro 30 seconds. I'll give you 30 seconds. Well, I, just, I want to thank the committee for, uh, for taking this on, the endorsement committee in particular to take this on. It's a, it's a hard challenge to do. Um, I come from a farm worker background. I grew up working in the fields at the age of eight. I worked in the cannery at the age of 17, went to community college. Uh, went on to UC Santa Cruz, graduated from UC Santa Cruz, worked as a counselor in Watsonville for nearly 10 years, ended up as a chief of staff for one of the supervisors for 16 years here in Monterey County. I've been on the council and as vice mayor in Soledad for seven years, and I thank all of you for, for this uh, trust. And my, my, whole, my whole agenda is a real simple agenda, is to bring county resources down into South County. That is that's my agenda. Okay, so committee reports. We went over finance earlier. Um, Jen, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. I don't see anything. Credentials, anything? No. Issues. If you have an issue, and I guess so you want to communicate with Bill Boozman and let bring that to your attention. Please do. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'm, I'm, let's just give it one minute for people to clear. Can we some people plan on staying after to help you clean up? I don't want to be stuck here we're almost done. serve in that role, and I have asked Ryan Mudavar to um, take on that role. I've met with him, discussed this with the e board. If you have uh, something that you would like to communicate it through our e blast or on our website, please email or contact Ryan Mudavar, whether it's a club event or something else, please contact Ryan Mudavar, okay? He's not here right now. He has to be here today. His email address is on the sign-in sheet when you come in under candidates. His phone number and email address, please copy it on your way out of the room. And turn in your voting card. Okay, and then, um, I don't know, David, do you have an update on development? Anything more? Yeah, actually, there was a uh, campaign committee uh, statement. Uh, uh, hey, there's still a lot of crosstalk. Give that to James as the secretary back there. So, um, 
two things. Number one, Swing Left, which is a national uh, organization that's trying to flip kind of purple districts and make them blue. They are going to be working with us out of the Center for Change. If you are wanting to help or if your club would like to help, you will have opportunities to do so. And phone banking in basically purple districts and trying to help Democrats running for Congress in those districts, okay? So that's one opportunity. And then I've already been in contact and working with uh, candidates that we are endorsing, uh, asking them for donations, and then the Central Committee. My commitment is we will match whatever they donate. And that will allow us to send out a mailer for this primary. Um, and so basically that's the report from the campaign committee. And David, you don't have, do you have anything else you want to share as far as development? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I just kind of passed this out earlier in the room a little bit. Uh, the development committee is going to have a meeting uh, April 5th, Thursday, uh, as a kind of verification with that lounge. Uh, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, please, we want to make sure we have a date for our annual dinner. And there's a whole bunch of other fundraisers where we're trying to get uh, some help. But, so please show up if you can. If you can, uh, drop me up. Uh, you want to send that around? Yeah, I think I sent some of these around. Right. Right. Yeah. If you don't have one, I'll pass them around. And what we would yeah. like is we would like to partner with clubs on these events. The late, we are the, the driver of one major event a year. We need all the clubs. We'll partner with you. We'll bring it to your community. We'll uh, advertise. We'll, we'll help advertise it. But he's got some great ideas. We need to partner with people in the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, so we have to do that. And then because we need to raise a lot of money for this upcoming election. And then I don't know if we have uh, any e board updates. So we haven't had e board in a while. State e board didn't tell or anything. The chance in the Balkans. Uh, uh, the next e board meeting is July 13th, maybe July 13th. And Dominic, I don't know if he's still here. No, he walked out. Okay. All right. So if you have any, anybody with a request for a future agenda item, okay, I don't see any. David? Um, this is going to be a long discussion. Don't make a long now. What's the item? Um, I think the attempt by the chair of the endorsement committee to streamline the process, uh, that needs to be considered by the body. Uh, again, I would like to have a, a discussion on whether or not we can combine endorsements. That would, it, I think it would have uh, streamlined the process, yes. So I would recommend that our uh, next meeting that we would consider adding it as an agenda item. Okay, we can agendize a discussion of that. Uh, yeah, uh, can I tack on to that? Um, maybe I missed the communication, maybe it's in the policy and I'm just ignorant of that. But I would have loved to be able to uh, give to the endorsement committee a question specific to a particular candidate uh, for use in their questionnaire. And it seems to me if we don't have that as part of the policy in advance of the endorsement process, we probably ought to offer something like that in case. So that would substitute for okay, So what I'm going to suggest is we just have a discussion, a kind of, you know, discussion of the process. So as we go into the next one, again, maybe we can improve it, okay? So we'll have a discussion of the endorsement process relative to the next one. Uh, David, anything else on that? So... Um, I would recommend that there be a presentation, and not just an open discussion. Okay. And I'm prepared to work with the chair on that presentation of just what the policy is, and what the proposal might be, so that it's not an open-ended. You know. Right. And we do have a procedure, so if we're going to change it, we actually would have to amend our existing procedures. I'd love to have coffee with you or tea or go for a walk. Go ahead. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, give the heads up that the, the, the elections that are coming up this year, we're going to be pushing for for uh, active people that are concerned about pesticides and, and the quality of water and environment around their schools because one of the, the first things is health and safety. Before even education, it's health and safety. For, for, that's the obligation of the school districts. Uh, Sonia and the work that they did at the, on, the, on the school and stuff, and Greenfield was awesome. 
we're the first uh, folks to do that, and, and they're really pushing forward on it in Greenfield, and, and that's a great, great template to work with. Them. So, so if you guys, if, you, if there is a, uh, you know, if there's a resolution or if there is a specific proposal, if you send it to me and to Phil, then the issues committee can bring it and we can discuss it. Okay. I'm going to email you the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, Levon. How do you know that we have to have a yeah, we're going to be doing it again. We're going to be doing it again. Okay, so um, if you have anything else that you would like to see, please just send me an email. And again, reminder, if you're a club and you want something in the packet so you don't have to just read it we don't remember it, let us know beforehand the next meeting. We can have it in the packet. All right, thank you all. And he finished on time. Well done, sir.